What is happening, YouTube? This is Dave Croft. Hope that you are doing okay today. This is the week five 52 Qs check in, and uh, it's a little bit late because, man, it has been just a whirlwind couple of weeks. And the queue that I'm going to be showing you today is is the week four queue, but is actually not the queue based on the uh, based on the theme. And the theme was the uh, photo inspiration, where I put up a, a picture of a uh, like a coffee shop, and you can check out last week's last week's video. I guess it would have been like two weeks ago almost uh, video where where I talked about that. But um, as as you may or may not know, I work with a publisher who uh, who submits music to CBS Sports, and I've had you know things on the NFL and PGA and NCAA tournaments, and so every three years, CBS hosts the Super Bowl. And it kind of goes around between networks, between Fox, NBC, and CBS. So CBS last had it in 2016, I guess, for the 15 season. And so here we are again, 2019 for the 2018 season. And so that means it's Super Bowl season at CBS. And so there was a huge push by uh, by all, all of all of the guys in the uh, composing group that I'm that I'm with, and the publisher and the library, a huge push for. Super Bowl music, and so everything, I mean, every project went, went, you know, kind of onto the back burner, whether it was an audio book that I was, I was uh, editing and recording, or whether it was some curriculum I was writing, whether it was cues, 452 cues. So I, I did want to jump in and, and, and show you what I wrote for that week. It, it's not the 52 Q theme, but, you know, the, the whole idea behind 52 cues is every week you write something. You write at least two minutes of music. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. While it's not, you know, the coffee shop kind of thing, it is uh, the breakdown of an epic trailer cue that I wrote for uh, for usage during the Super Bowl. Now, Super Bowl is coming gone, and uh, sadly, this did not make air. As a matter of fact, none, none of the, the tracks that we submitted for the Super Bowl package actually made air and and I'm not gonna lie that was that was super discouraging you know when when you make a big push and 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 you you put out all that creative effort and it was all kind of last minute even had one uh, a, a call from from the network you know looking for a piece last minute on Saturday 36 hours before the Super Bowl and they they put a call out, hey, we're looking for this. And so I spent you know five or six hours on Saturday before the Super Bowl this past Saturday, writing a cue that never made air. And man, that is not only is it a, a gut punch to the ego, <laughs> uh, but it's man, it, it's it's really hard to kind of it's hard to stay motivated. It's easy to stay motivated when when you're making air and things are going well and you're writing things and. And uh, the next week they make air. The, I had a play on the AFC Championship game that I had written about 10 days before, and it shows up on air. And so I was feeling really good about the Super Bowl. I wrote six new cues. I reworked two cues for. So I had a total of eight, eight pieces in that Super Bowl package, but none of them made air, and none of none of the, the cues from any of our team made air. And it was a weird broadcast to begin with, but uh, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the, it was just the universe kind of checking my ego a little bit because I was feeling really positive and really good about it. But nonetheless, even though they didn't make Super Bowl air, they still are with the library. They still have a hope of maybe getting some air with golf or something like that. But I wanted to show you the cue that I wrote for week four. Again, not the photo inspiration cue, but... The epic orchestral trailer that cue that I wrote, it's called Bent But Not Broken, which I think in hindsight is, I don't know, it's 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 become kind of the theme, <laughs> I guess, the theme of uh, of my career. Bent But Not Broken. This is this feels a lot more poignant now on the other side of the Super Bowl. But let's take a listen to it and then I'm going to break it down for you.
All right, so that was Bent But Not Broken, and yeah, so it's a trailer track, and so because it's a trailer track, that means that we need a certain build, and it very trailer tracks very much play by a, a formula, especially modern kind of post-Inception trailer tracks in the uh, Marvel movie era, uh, epic kind of big trailer tracks. By the way, I did just have those frozen just because it can be a little processor intensive, especially as I'm doing like a screen share or a screencast and everything. And so it can make some audio distortions. But let's take this piece by piece. So it starts off with just a really simple, uh, simple little piano line. Playing very basic chord progression. And this uses a blend of the Alicia Keys plus the Giant. I just kind of give it some depth. So blend blend those together. I'm a big fan of blending sounds. You're going to see that kind of come in. Okay, so with trailer tracks, you kind of state the, the motive. And in this case, the motive is just a really simple, very, very unoriginal chord progression. Uh, lay in some, some strings with it. Just kind of fill it out a little bit. Bring in some, some horns here in just a moment. So every four bars... We're adding another little layer of intensity to it. So this horn's kind of kind of hinting at what's coming. Nice suspended chord five, uh, sus five. All right, and so then here we're, we're about at the 20 second mark and we're gonna bring in our first real uh, kind of melodic idea, which is just this kind of viola thing happening. And my viol again, I'm layering here. I've got two sounds going on. Uh, my primary sound really is, and let me, uh, let, me, let me get that. My primary sound is this Spiccato uh, Project Sam Symphobia 1 sound. If you've watched my channel, you know I love me some Symphobia. Full disclosure, I am not, I guess I wouldn't need a, dis a disclosure for this, but I'm not endorsed by them. I just think the products are a really good idea. And on top of that, These are the Agitato Sordino Spiccato strings from 8DO. And what I like about 8DO is a lot of their string libraries are offered kind of a la carte. So it's just like one little component. I think I got this on flash sale for like $18 or $28 or something like that. Definitely definitely follow them or, or subscribe to their email blast because they have killer deals all the time. So you layer them together and uh, you're, you have a nice... So Symphobia gives me the ensemble this gives me the, the kind of attack so usually I, I, I layer in my symphobia with VSL strings but I've been really digging the 8DO stuff here lately so that's that's on top also kind of uh, bring a little bit more beef to the piano table here just playing single octaves the first time around and then double octaves in the left hand with a little, um, with a little suspended cymbal roll, and I brought in some it's just action strikes, native instruments, super, super popular, very, very common. Have some nice, really kind of cinematic thump, thumps and booms. Another thing I love to do is it's really hard when you're dealing with an orchestra. It's hard to to kind of coax the real low end out of out of live orchestra sounds, you know? And so I, all the time, and I'm definitely not original to this idea, I will layer in sub, a sub bass to go underneath these other things happening. Just to fatten it up a little bit. Now, what, what is the sub bass? The sub bass is a sine wave, which I get for free when I load in an EXS instrument, which is Logic Sampler, but if you don't load anything into the sampler, then you get a sine wave. I mean, sure, I could, I guess I could draw up the ESM or, or, or ES2 or something like that, but that just seems really complicated. I set it to legato so the notes don't uh, occur simultaneously. And then adjust some of the, uh, the release. So it kind of fades out a little bit. By the way, I think it was Christian Henson, uh, who is a Spitfire guy, composer, 
in the UK. I think uh, I think that he he talks about doing this, and I think that's kind of where I got the idea. But I, I'm addicted to adding sub bass. All right, so it's a trailer track. So give if on trailer tracks, give your your editor edit points, and that's exactly what this is going on here. So just one, two, three. Right, a little reverse hit, I think, this way. I can't remember, because I rendered it to audio. It's much easier to kind of place these. I think that might have been Evolve, like an Evolve reverse hit or something. It could have been 8DO's hybrid tools. So I'm not sure. I don't really remember. All right, so this is the next gear. It's like gears of a car. We have first gear, second gear, all the way up into, you know, six gear and beyond. Layer in some timpani. This is some play. Uh, I think it's Hollywood. Hollywood, uh, yep, Hollywood orchestral percussion, some timpani, and some tubular bells, which are the Vienna Ensemble tubular bells. And piatti, which are just concert crash cymbals. Yeah, that's that's one of the things. If you really want like that kind of splash of sound, a drum set crash cymbal is not going to be the way to do that. You're going to want piatti or concert crash cymbals. They sound much better. All right, so we're building. Layer in some, some cello here. So my strings... Just playing um, quarter notes there, or uh, yeah, quarter notes. My legato strings. These are just layered symphobia plus the the sordino sustains as opposed to the sordino spiccato. And then here I break the I break the violas into or the violin and violas into harmony. Here they are not harmony. So, you know, if you're writing tracks and you're looking for another gear to add, but you don't necessarily want, like, I don't want to keep stacking strings up didn't, as far as additional layers, because, the, you know, I've, I've gotten my viola, my violas, my violins, cellos, and I'm even kind of faking this low end here. And so um, I will break it out into harmony. So here we have unisons, then stack harmony. Uh, layer in some crescendo, some brass crescendos. And look, oh my gosh, it's symphobia. These are just uh, symphobia crescendos. And they're not they're not timed, they're not MIDI mapped, but you can adjust the speed. Uh, this takes a little bit of uh, you know kind of eyeballing it, but it it works well. Add a little bit of synth. To it just to kind of push it then we get the choir involved uh, one of my favorite choirs and this was a uh, a holiday sale acquisition from 8do and what i love about this library this is their requiem professional is you can assign uh you can assign uh just random kind of latin-esque And then you can use a key switch to have them, and that's what's going on here. If you uh, if you look really closely, you can see the key switch there at the bottom. And so as it's going along, it's going to change. Inca, all right. So so uh, so it comes, it changes right there at the end. So a little, we're really pushing now. We're about to come to kind of the drop. Well, all right, so I put a two four bar, one two stop, which is essentially the same type of a uh, of a hit we had here. Um, essentially hitting on beat three, but now it's going to be a four four beat hold. It's going to sound like a fermata, but it's 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 absolutely metered in. Two three four. All right, and so now we're coming to the payoff. We're going to switch up the chord progression a little bit, sprinkle in a little minor. Um, just 
sprinkle in some. Uh, these are mega horns by uh, by eight do from their hybrid. Now my choir is really cooking. Right, I mean, it's just kind of nonsense uh, Latin words. It sounds kind of epic and uh, like ch like Gregorian chant or something like that. A little synth thing happening here. That guy. And then even fatter sub bass down here. got some other loops happening some this is evolve evolve the percussion timpani is a lot busier just keeping adding to it all right so this was uh, going to the four chord here and then instead of going to the four chord, then we go to the six chord, the major six chord, or minor six. Yeah, I think I got that backwards. Here come the horns. And the horns, this is my go-to horn, Cinebrass Core Two Horn Ensemble. Love it. It just sounds great out of the box. All right, so there's the five sus. Five sus. You know, on retrospect, I probably should have hit that down bass. Probably should have gone bum, 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 bum. I should have done one more there at the end. I suppose that would be easy enough, just kind of. I wonder if I can get away with this kind of going boop. Yeah, yeah. If, if I were to resubmit that, that downbeat, that, that that's one of those things that it kind of always bugged me. So, and I did, um, did I? No, so, so everything's tempo locked until the very end. A four bar break. And then come back, sprinkle in the early, the early motive. Just in the top two strings. Okay. So yeah, really, really super, super simple. Not a lot happening. It just starts with one motive, build it, build it, keep layering, keep layering. And, and trailers work just like movies in that they are in acts. We have an act one, we have an act two, and then we have an act three. And then sometimes we have an epilogue, right? And so, uh, so this, this is absolutely the act one then we get into a little bit more here here comes act two then act three end it and then we finally have our little epilogue which would be when you know on a, on a, on a trailer this is when they're running the final Final title, car title cards and that kind of thing for that. My mastering chain is just ozone, and because I know this this client specifically wants really crazy hot hot mixes, uh, upwards of seven minus seven seven to eight luffs, which is admittedly extremely loud, but yeah, that's what the that's what the library uses, and so I give it to him. It's a little squashed, but that's okay. And my computer is really dogging. All right, so, so that was bent but not broken, and it was a lot of fun to work on. I've really enjoyed writing trailer cues. I've written several since the beginning of the year, but it's not, you know, it's not the uh, the coffee. I guess it could be, maybe. It could be the coffee the coffee cue. So, so yeah, with trailer cues, kind of start with the motive, repeat the motive, keep stacking, keep layering. Mixing becomes 
really interesting with trailer cues. Let me see if I can get uh, get the mixing window up here because you have to do a, a lot of work with the EQs because you have a lot of low end. You've got you've got a lot of things kind of all competing for attention, and you can address some of that in the mastering chain but you really want to you really want to attend to it earlier in and even now I listen back and I'm like eh, there's some things I would probably change about it but it's already submitted so I wrote it I submitted it and I'm going to forget about it and then I am going to repeat so for week five, the assignment was vocalizations. And so vocalizations, it, that, that, that week came amidst all of the other stresses of the Super Bowl submissions. And so I will do a separate video where I talk about what I did instead, which actually kind of maybe included some vocalizations. It wasn't a Super Bowl assignment, but it did come in the heat of battle. While I was in the midst of cranking out eight Super Bowl cues, it I had another call from another another library looking for cues or, or jingles actually for rooms to go. And so we'll see if those land, but I will get into that in my next video where I talk about what do you do when you're a production music composer and you are now editing vocals, which you really maybe haven't done a ton of because you're not necessarily a singer-songwriter, but we'll get into that next time. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this helpful. And yeah, I wish you the best of luck and continued prosperity in your career. And I hope that 52 Qs encourages you to just keep writing. Just keep writing. We'll see you next time.